The Active Directory is very dependent on a fully functional DNS, which is why when you install your domain controller, you are basically required to install at least one DNS server. Now, for redundancy purposes, whenever I build a domain controller, unless I'm building a really large Active Directory, I mean in the order of tens of thousands of users, I will typically make my domain controller a DNS server as well. So the first domain controller I build, it'll ask me, hey, we need DNS, do you want to install it? And we will. And when I build second and subsequent domain controllers, I'll always put DNS on there as well. And I'll use my Active Directory to replicate the DNS information around. So most of the time, I don't have to actually do very much with DNS once it's up and running. In this video, though, we're now going to take a look at some of the things we need to do with DNS once we are up and running. So, what do I need to do first? Well, let's go ahead and bring up the DNS management tool. So I'm going to go to Administrative Tools, DNS. And here we see Win2008 DC1. This is my first domain controller here. We see here we have our forward lookup zone, and we have our msdcs.learnitfirst.ads, as well as my learnitfirst.ad. This is the root of my Active Directory forest. And we see here each of my workstations Virtual XP is one of my workstations, as well as my two domain controllers have registered their names and their IP addresses into here. And that was this was all set up automatically for me. I don't actually have to do anything in these domains unless I wanted to add my own records for some reason. Like maybe I wanted to have a www.learnitfirst.ad. So that if somebody went out to a command prompt, you know, right now if we say, ping www.learnitfirst.ad, nothing happened. But if I was to go and I was to build a simple, well, host record, I could build www, and I could point this to a specific IP address, because that's what a host record does. A host record takes a name and points it to an IP address. And I'm going to add that host. So we just added www, should talk to that IP address. So let's try this again. Oh, ping www.learnitfirst.ad. Oh, it's going to take it a minute. Well, we can kind of force it to flush DNS, and that'll flush the little client cache it has, at which point it'll do the DNS lookup again, and presto, there we go. We were able to find it. And so that was an A record. Now, another type of record might be what we call a C name record, and maybe we're going to make this one FTP is really just an alias for www.learnitfirst.ad. And we'll hit OK. And that's what the FTP, so if we put an FTP.learnitfirst.ad, it's really going to look up www.learnitfirst.ad, which will return this IP address right here. So if I go out here and I try ping FTP.learnitfirst.ad, look at that. FTP translated into www.learnitfirst.ad, which translated into this IP address, and we pinged it. We sent it some data, and it responded back. Now, that didn't install a web server. That didn't install an FTP server or anything like that. What it did for me was it established the name resolution for me. All right. Well, that's what a lot of these other records are. If you look here, we have all these A records you know, for each of my domain controllers as well as the workstations that are part of the domain. And we see in here there's also the information about the name server that handle this, because the two servers I have running DNS are listed right here. And then this is also just the direct IPs of those servers, in case the name resolution isn't working for any reason. And the source of authority comes from my first domain controller we built, Win2008 DC1. Now, all these other records in here just have to do with ways of finding different networking services. We see here that we have one for LDAP. LDAP, and if we double click on one of these, we find if you're after an LDAP server for this domain, for the domain Learn It First, utilizing the LDAP service that I can communicate using TCP with a priority of zero and a weighting of 100, and port 389, I should talk to Win2008 DC2. And I could also talk to Win2008 DC1. And look at that, we're all set. 
And if I'm after a Kerberos server, and Kerberos has to do with authentication, and that's basically how you log into Windows. If I'm looking for Kerberos running over TCP, I need to talk to port 88 on Win 2008 DC2. Now, don't worry about this priority and waiting. That would be for a really fine tuning of an Active Directory DNS queries for waiting. And, you know, the idea is, well, I only want 20% of my queries going to this server and I want 80% going to this server and things like that. Most administrators are not going to go that far. And even if you did start to play with those, as soon as you reboot the server, they're likely to be set back to the defaults. So don't worry about those. Here we have Kerberos password servers. These are servers that we can change our password on. And we see that both of our domain controllers show up there. And what it has to do is we would do these little queries. You know, for underscore kpasswd dot underscore tcp dot learn at first dot ad if we needed to change our password. Well, we wouldn't make the query. Our client, our Windows XP or our Windows Vista business client would know to make those queries to find those servers. And in here you'll find other variations that have to do with UDP and services that operate over UDP. And we find domain information in here and we find Active Directory site information and we find global catalog information. And that's the stuff we find in the Windows 2008 DH, uh, DNS server. And on each of my domain controllers that I have installed DNS for, we'll find this information replicating around. In fact, let me go ahead and connect to Win 2008 DC2. And here we go. Here's my other domain controller. And we see that they both seem to have the same information. Even though they're different servers, look at this. They both have this FTP and www. They both have FTP and www. Well, let's go ahead and do a little cleanup. We'll zap these two records. And let's see. Do we have them here still? Oh, we still have them here, but they're replicated using Active Directory, so within a couple of minutes, those two entries should disappear. Okay, well, how do I know that's happening? Well, we could sit here and wait and watch for that to happen, but let's right-click on our zone, learn at first.ad, and click on Properties. Now we see here that the zone is currently running, and it's Active Directory integrated. If we click change, it tells us that it's a primary zone, which stores a copy that can be updated directly. So either of my domain controllers can be updating the DNS, and the zone is stored in the Active Directory. And that's because our DNS server is running on a domain controller. All right. And it replicates to all DNS servers in the domain. So since both of these are in the learnitfirst.ad domain, they should both contain the same information. And they allow dynamic update from secure stations only. So only members of the domain can update this information. That way somebody with a rogue workstation can't just start throwing information into the DNS. All right. And let's get a refresh and see. Yep, look at that. It just took a little bit of time. And what do we have? Well, we, had the cap we now have the option of it keeping all the information cleaned up. All right. So this is kind of what's going on with our Active Directory DNS. It's Active Directory integrated, replicating the information around. If we take a look under here, we find references to Active Directory sites, which is kind of an advanced topic when you have more than one location that your Active Directory is running from. So we'll hit that in our advanced Active Directory chapter. We've got TCP, all the services we can find that are running TCP. We also can see all the servers we have that are running UDP and the types of services we can talk. You'll notice LDAP and Global Catalog aren't listed there. That's because LDAP requires TCP communication. It cannot run over UDP for our Active Directory purposes. Down here we find the domain uh, DNS as well as the forest DNS. This is where it's keeping track of what information should be replicated around the domain and the forest through the domain controllers. Now, we should see most of this matching between the two domain controllers in our domain because, well, they're replicating all that information around. Now, let's take a look at what Microsoft did not set up for us, though, when we set up our Active Directory. When I built my first domain controller, it asked me what did I want to call my domain, 
and it built the zone here, learn it first dot AD, and it built an area underneath called MSDCS. And this just has to do with the real nitty gritty pieces of AD to find things. Like here's the raw database or yeah, the raw database GUIDs of particular domain controllers. And has to do with some real specific things like where the PDC emulator is. So which server has that role in my AD? But if we go click on reverse lookup zone, there's nothing here. And this is one of those things that you really want to go in and put into the system. Why? Well, let's start with a simple diagnostic tool you're likely to run into, or, you're like, or you might already know how to use. If you open up a command prompt, CMD, most operating systems have a command called NSLOOKUP. And it's for doing DNS lookups against your server. Now, huh, the DNS request timed out. Timeout was two seconds. Default server unknown. Does that say that we're not talking to any server? Well, no. We're actually talking to a server right away here. We're talking to the server that's configured on our TCP IP stack. So, if I say, well, what is... Uh, let's see, win 2008dc2.learnitfirst.ad. And back comes our result. We asked the server, and back came the result, windows 2008dc2.learnitfirst.ad and that IP address. So we're actually talking to a server. We just don't know what that server's name is because we started with an IP address. And what happens is a reverse lookup takes an IP address and turns it into a name. Now we might get into a little bit of IPv6 ugliness here, but we can get the general idea of what this reverse lookup is going to do for me. So I'm going to start by right clicking and saying a new zone. I'm going to click next. I want this to be a primary zone and I want to store this in the Active Directory. Okay, why do I want to store it in the AD? Well, I want it to replicate around. Because if I add this to server 1, server 2 ought to wind up in here as well and ought to get a copy of it. So we'll click Next. And I want this to replicate to all, by default, all DNS servers in the domain. Now if you have more than one domain, you might want to consider the impact of how far you replicate this around. But since we only have one domain, we'll be fine utilizing this option here. So we'll click Next. And we're going to build an IPv4 reverse lookup zone. And, well, the network we're using is 192.168.0. And so it's going to build us a reverse lookup zone called 192.168.0. Actually, it's going to call it something different. You'll see when we get done. And we want to only allow secure updates so that only servers that are and workstations that are a member of the domain are allowed to put their entries in there. So we'll click Next and Finish. And under Reverse Lookups... There we go. We now have 0.168.192.inaddr.arpa. This is a reverse lookup zone. And instead of reading it left to right, it reads the IP address right to left. Now, we need to do a couple things. We need to go out to command prompt. Let's exit out of here for a second. Let's do an IP config register DNS. And when you do an IP config register DNS, you tell the system to go re-register its IP addresses into DNS, both the forward lookup and the reverse lookup entry. So when I go back here and do a refresh, look what we find. There we go. We now have an entry for the Win 2008 DC1 is now present. And if we go back to our command prompt and type NSLOOKUP, let's see what we get. Well, we don't get anything yet, but that's because we've got IPv6 weirdness kind of happening here. See this colon colon one? That's the local host address for this server. Ah, that has to do with our IP stack. But let's point this to server 192.168.0.10, and look at that. It, it comes back with the address of that server. All right, so... What we have is we have that information. Let's see if it's made its way down to our domain controller number two yet. It hasn't yet, but we just need to give it a little bit of Active Directory replication time, 
And we'll find out that this reverse lookup will also appear in our other uh, zone here. Now, if you have a large number of different IP address ranges used on your network, you might want to add the reverse lookup zones for each of the zones in use on your network. Because in addition to the servers putting their data in there, a workstation can as well. In fact, I'm going to go over here to a Windows XP station I have. We're going to open up command prompt here and we're going to do an IP config slash register DNS. And I just updated my records. And in fact, if this workstation does an NS lookup, look what they do. When they open it up, it comes right up and says, oh, that server, that IP, based on that IP address that you're talking to Win 2008 DC1. So what we're able to do is we see that it clears up some issues with some of these screens. And also when we look back at our zone, look at that, dot .199, that server's IP address or that workstation's IP address is now found in my DNS as well. Okay, let's see. Has it started to show up yet? Get a refresh? Nothing yet. Nope. Yep, there it is. Just took a refresh. And look at that. We now see the dot .10 there. And we could either wait some time or if we go over to our other domain controller here, we can do an IP config register DNS. to force this workstation or this server or this domain controller to populate its information. So let's jump back to our server, get a refresh here. Look at that, 12 started to show up on from server 2's DNS and it won't be long before we'll see it in server 1's DNS because that's all replicating using the multi-master model of the AD. So we can have domain controller changes coming in on server 1 as well as server 2 and they'll all eventually reach the steady state where they all have the same information. And that's sort of the first pass at the essentials of Active Directory uh, DNS and some of the things we need to do.